And here is the Sunset Garden in Forest Home Cemetery. And I have no idea what's down there. Let's take a look. Probably nothing. Yeah. There's Hyde. Now we just gotta find Jekyll. Um. Well, they're buried in the same grave, obviously. <laughs> but um, bum. That's a interesting headstone. There. I wouldn't think they're probably allowed in here just because of it. Somebody wants their grandma getting crapped on by somebody. So here is the Stolper grave. Couldn't find any info on them, but they got a pretty big headstone. That thing's probably 25, 30 feet high. And it looks like a hand broke off. Nate mentioned that earlier. It was a hand to match the other one. Oh, I didn't, uh, I didn't realize Faith Hill was here. Big fan. Nate's a big fan. Could ask her if Tim McGraw is really nice. Are they still married? I don't no. know. Here's the uh, grave of Edward George Ryan. This one says, to the memory of Edward George Ryan, who as Chief Justice of Wisconsin, wrought with master hand in upbuilding its system of jurisprudence and added dignity to government by law this memorial stat structure sorry is dedicated by the state bar association on behalf of its members and others at home and abroad a d1911 yeah this has been here a long time there it is edward george ryan chief justice supreme court of wisconsin 1874 to 1880. Here's the Chaintron Mausoleum. Bronze, those, those must be bronze doors, just looking by the, ooh, by the discolorations almost fall. Pretty neat little mausoleum. Um, according to this find the grave, Gustav Chaintron was a manufacturer of Wattendor Antiquarian Cement. No idea. Yeah, here's his, uh, here's his grave, I think. Oh, yeah. What was his name? Gustav? Gustav. Gustav. He was a first generation French American deceased at age 30. He had narrowly escaped death at the age of 16 from an explosion in the family dying business that killed his elder brother and sister in law, preceded his parents in death. Wow. Manufacturer of Wittendorf's antiquarian cement and cemented cloth. Number 558 River Street. This preparation renders all articles to which it's applied absolutely waterproof and sufficiently fireproof to protect dry pine surfaces to which it is applied as to require several minutes for ignition. Wow. There's a whole bunch more. There's a huge paragraph. Here's one for Earls. Erected to the memory of William H. Earls, MD, a careful, diagnostic, and brilliant surgeon whose skill was only equaled by his kindness of heart. This angel is pretty neat. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believe Leaveth in me. Touch me where. Touch he where dead, yet shall he lives. And though and whoever liveth, and believeth in me shall never die. Oh, this one's beautiful. Very yeah, awesome. it is. So we are at the Fister plot. Guido, Charles, Charles Fister, 
as a lot of Milwaukeeans may know and a lot of unfortunate baseball players who stayed at his hotel the haunted Fister Hotel he was born in 1859 and passed away in 1927 the Fister is like the hotel downtown it is where all the baseball players stay I would guess movie stars anybody who stays here in Milwaukee yeah the infamous Joey Lawrence ghost episode of whatever yeah. the program was are there um, any movie stars bigger than Joey Lawrence if there are I don't want to know about it. Alfred Lunt and Lynn Fontaine were universally regarded as the greatest acting team in the history of the English-speaking theater. They were married for 55 years and were inseparable both on and off the stage. They, their home, which is in Genesee Depot, it's called Ten Chimneys, is still available for tours, I believe. But this is where Alfred Lunt and Lynn Fontaine rest in peace. So Alfred Lunt passed away in 77. Lynn Fontaine in 1983. We're still we're, we're still looking. Nate's over there. And I'm over here. We're still looking for the beer barons of Milwaukee. We'll get to them eventually. Up here. Here's the Garrett's. The Garrett Mausoleum. Well, looky here, we found the Davidsons. Yep, there's their big stone. William H. William A. And there it is. William C. Robert J. And there it is. Half of the infamous Harley Davidson Motorcycle Company. I believe it was uh, William M. or William C. that founded it. I am not sure. Don't quote me on that. That's the Davidsons. There's an Alstead mausoleum over here. It's pretty sad that you gotta chain these things shut so people don't go in them. Please folks, when you're at a cemetery, be respectful. Have the utmost respect for the people who are trying to rest here no need to break in no need to topple stones no need to be stupid just be kind oh, that's interesting right there it's kind of a beautiful little view in that mausoleum we have a little bit of a waterfall over there i don't think you can see it though nice clear water so peaceful. The leaves are starting to turn. Let's see what they got on this side. And there they are. What we came here to look for. The beer barons. And this isn't a beer barons, but it's still pretty cool. The Matthews Mausoleum. 1891 this I'm guessing is the correct Vogel we didn't do the other Vogel because I didn't go back right no we didn't go back I'm pretty sure this is the Vogel from the uh, Fister Vogel tannery it is sown a natural body it is raised a spiritual body that is written on the Sanborn Monument. So here's what we came here to check out. This is phenomenal, in my opinion. And probably Nate's opinion. <laughs> yep. I'm not one to... This place is big, this, this mausoleum is bigger than my apartment. Borchard, I wonder if that's the people that had to do with Borchard Field. 
I'm not sure. It's a prominent name. Where the Brewers used to play a long time ago. But here's what we were looking for. Indeed. The Blatz Monument. The Blatz Beer Company. One of the beer barons in Wisconsin. Place, this mausoleum is bigger than any place I've ever lived. I it think. is bigger than most two-story homes. Just to give you an idea of how tall this Blatz mausoleum is. I'm that's a, Nate. I'm a burly five foot eight. He's five foot eight and that thing goes up. Yeah, that's got to be 50, 60 feet high. I'd say so. Valentin Blatz. He was born in 1826, passed away in 1894. He purchased a brewery and later expanded the buildings until they covered more than four city blocks. In 1874, he produced Milwaukee's first bottled beer. The company was incorporated in 1889 as the Valentin Blatz Brewing Company. Blatz was also prominent in banking, railroad promotion, and real estate. Nice. So our next uh, stone here is Schlitz, another brewery that no longer exists in Milwaukee, but the Schlitz beer is still made. That's another really tall monument, lost May 7th, 1875. I don't know the uh, significance of that. Upon coming to Milwaukee in 1855, Schlitz worked in the brewery of August Krug. When Krug died, Schlitz took over the management of the brewery for Krug's widow, Anna Marie, whom he married. After a new brewery was built in 1874, the company was reorganized and incorporated as the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company. While returning to Germany for a visit, Schlitz tragically lost his life at sea off the coast of England. Hence, lost May 7th, 1875. This is the grave of Frederick Pabst, the Pabst Brewing Company. Another company that no longer brews beer here. We used to be the brewing capital of the world, not anymore. There's Frederick Pabst's gravestone. And here it says on the stone to the memory of our beloved. And on the left side is Bla uh, Pabst. You know, I do remember when Pabst left Milwaukee, there was an outcry. People were not happy. Workers were not happy. Um, a lot of people swore they'd never drink the beer again. Don't know if they ever held true to their word. But when Pabst left Milwaukee, did not go well. Frederick Pabst. Working as a Great Lakes steamer captain, Pabst met the prominent Milwaukee brewer Philip Best. He married Best's daughter and invested his savings in the business. After Best's retirement, Pabst and another son-in-law emailed someone or another, built the brewery into the nation's largest, eventually becoming the Pabst Brewing Company. Among his many contributions to Milwaukee's social and cultural life was the Pabst Theater. Now both the Pabst Theater and his mansion on Wisconsin Avenue are reportedly haunted. And as far as the Emil guy goes, his last name is Sh Shandine? Shandine? I don't know. Sounds right to me. Shandine. Let's go with it. All right. Where are we now? Henry C. Payne. He is a sometimes postmaster general of the United States. Born November 23, 1843, died October 4, 1904, an able executive, a public spirited citizen, a kindly neighbor, a loyal friend, a benefactor of the deserving. After life's fitful fever, he sleeps well. He must have been one, one interesting character to have a description like that. Yeah, no kidding. Fitful fever. Here's a Fremming.
An interesting little monument there. Oh boy, I know I'm gonna miss a lot, a lot, a lot of people who were buried here, but. I'm pretty sure that represents uh, he was harvested. I think that's wheat, isn't it, or some type of? It looks like wheat. Some type of. Uh, Maybe he was a brewer. Could be. Memory of Family Schuster. It looks just like a tree trunk. Then you got Max Schuster, who apparently loved his trains. I'm guessing he's an engineer, or a train engineer of some sort. Or work, some capacity to work for the railroad. This is a very interesting building. The chapel of Forest Home Cemetery. Very interesting, very interesting design. I don't even know if this uh, particular building is used for anything anymore. I mean, it almost looks like in some sp spots a gothic mansion. It is a very beautiful structure.